Hey everybody, we are at Union Street in Springfield, right off of there. We're Dakin Humane Society Live. Today we're going to tell you all about cats, kittens, and we're going to tell you how to stay safe this summer and most importantly, how to keep your pets safe this summer. So here to introduce us to our first animal, we have Alana Regan, Feline Success Coordinator here at Dakin. And that's kind of what you've done with our first pet of the week, Foofy. Tell us a little bit about Foofy first. So Foofy is a 12-year-old kitty. He's very loving. Very laid back. He's, he's easy. He is easy, and he's very fluffy. And as and you, spoofy. Yeah, and spoofy. So he is available for adoption here at the Springfield location. Nice. And you're a feline success coordinator. What does that mean uh, in terms of the cats? How do you help them? So as far as my position is concerned, um, I am focusing on felines. Uh, a lot of it is behavior based. Sometimes kitties come here, they're very nervous, um, scared. So I'm here to help develop programs to help them here with um, their stress levels and get them onto the adoption floor and into a new home. I think as someone uh, I've adopted before from Dakin, but as uh, f potential adopters out there, that's so comforting to know because a lot of times when there's a shelter animal situation, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's tricky for the Humane Society to know too because you get these animals for such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So you get to spend time with them and mm -hmm. get to help develop their social skills and kind of assess their, their tolerances and intolerances. Mm -hmm. And that makes life a whole lot easier. Right. And just help make them a little happier here. Yeah, and yeah. that's what we want while they're having their short-term stay before you, everybody in the Pioneer Valley and the Berkshires come here to adopt them. Now, the other thing that we want to talk about, cat summer safety tips. Here, Obviously, saying. we're going to do a little Thank cat you. handoff here. Lee <laughs> Chambers, she's our cat wrangler today. Tip number one, never leave your pet in a hot car. Correct. Cars can get very hot very quick. Cats, dogs, any pet should not be left in a car. And we see it, uh, you know, the news always does pieces all around the country. You can uh, cook cookies in a car. You can bake an egg in a car. Mm -hmm. And we don't want our, our pets to be in that environment. Right. Second tip, window screens. How do we secure them? Well, everyone wants to let fresh air in this time of year, mm -hmm. so it's really important to check your screens, give a good push, make sure they're locked. So if a cat jumps into the windowsill, it won't pop out. The cat won't be able to jump out or fall out. Great tip. Now, uh, having a pet comes with a lot of responsibility. We need to invest in flea and tick paraphernalia so that our pets don't get those infestations. That's right. So if you have an indoor or outdoor cat, it's very important to protect them against fleas and ticks. If you have an indoor only cat, it's always good to keep an eye on them. Give them a comb, a flea comb once a week. Make sure there isn't any flea dirt. And if so, you want to talk with your vet about what the best treatment is for that. Next tip, no matter whether your pets are indoor or outdoor, they need identification tags. Right. So. Cat, um, cat collars are important, mm -hmm. that, so they're safe to go outside, either they're breakaway or stretchy. As this I was say, these are specifically really neat. They're stretchy collars. Yes, so if they do get stuck, they can get out. Um, also, microchips. This is a microchip tag. Microchips are very important as well because it's, a, it's an identification tag they can't lose. It's important to keep all your information up to date yeah. so that if the animal does end up somewhere, it mm -hmm. can be returned back to you. Well, that's another bonus of adopting a pet from Dakin. Every pet goes home microchip. Absolutely. Last Lastly, vaccinations, so important. Yes, so vaccinations, If again, if you have an indoor outdoor cat, they are more exposed to things outdoors, so keeping them up to date on their vaccines keeps them healthy. Indoor only cats, it's always good to talk with your vet, see what they recommend as far as for the environment and their lifestyle, and keep them up to date as well. And vaccinations, it's kind of just like human medicine, prevention, an ounce of prevention is worth a exactly. pound of, uh, you know, whatever the, the saying ends. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. But what you have to do is put the money in up front, just like with our bodies. Mm -hmm. So this way we don't have to deal with stuff down the road. And when people yeah. adopt pets from Dakin too, they often uh, almost always come with all the vaccinations that they need. Yes. So they're up to date with their vaccinations. They've been microchips. Um, so you may have to follow up with your vet if there's a series, such as a kitten. You do have to get a series of vaccinations, but we provide everything up to date as far as when they're adopted. And we have our low cost vaccination clinics as well every Thursday at at 9 o'clock where uh, folks can come in and get vaccinations, microchip, and flea preventative. Sounds good. And no shortage of success stories here. We're going to bring you some of those later today. Also, a whole lot of pets of the week. Big week here. We're live at Dakin. And for more information, before you come on down, you go to DakinHumane.org.
We're back live here at the Dakin Humane Society. It's in Springfield, but we shouldn't forget, Lee, there is another one in Leverett, too. People yes. can always go to the animals Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Same hours, Tuesday through Sunday, 1230 to 530. By the way, I, you know this already. This is Lee Chambers. She's the marketing <laughs> manager here. Always a pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you. You too. And we have a great pet to show <laughs> off and a great handler. And by the yes. way, his shirt says, I like to party. <laughs> and by party, I mean walk dogs. That's a shirt that I need. That's exactly what my idea of partying is. Introduce exactly. us to this dog. This is, uh, first of all, this is Daniel Simpson, who is a marvelous volunteer here. He volunteered to uh, handle Spence for us. Spence is a one-year-old pit bull, and he is a wonderful dog. Spence came to us recently from a, uh, a shelter that didn't have the programs that Dakin has. It didn't have as many interactive programs. Mm -hmm. So he really spent a lot of time alone. And... He, this is a wonderful dog. But he really interacts beautifully with people. I was going to say, what's so impressive, this is a smart dog. He is very smart. Very so, smart. I want you to get this dog home. It's one of those dogs, if you want to play with him, if you want to <laughs> teach a dog new tricks, he's, he has the capability to learn, and he wants to. He really does. He's young. He's one year old, so he's got a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. He would be best suited to a uh, home where there are adults only. And if you want to go out and spend a lot of time in the great outdoors, hiking, going on adventures, this is your guy. And this is the Sweet time dog. of year to do it, too. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. That being said, the <laughs> summer, while it's fun, everybody gets to go outside and have a great time, it's also a little nerve-wracking because uh, pets can get uh, injured and hurt more easily in the summertime. There are safety concerns for sure, and uh, I'll just give you a few of them yeah, absolutely. for summer safety. Well, um, well, let's talk heat stroke first because that's, yeah. I mean, I was feeling like I was getting heat stroke the other day. It's so hot, <laughs> and, and, that be, and I know how to treat myself. Dogs don't. Exactly. So if you're somewhere with your dog and uh, you see your dog becoming... Um, Overheated, uh, maybe having trouble breathing, maybe panting too much, high heart rate, mm -hmm. uh, respiration rate, drooling, drooling yeah. weakness, collapse even, that's the worst. You've got to get that dog to a, a cool spot right away. Um, hopefully get them to a vet or an animal hospital as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. In the interim, get them in a cool place. Maybe uh, cool water applied to them, not cold. Not, yeah, exactly. Cool. And then you can also uh, try to get them into the water to maybe put them in the bath. But once again, it shouldn't be an ice cold bath. Cool. Yeah, that's too abrupt a shock for mm -hmm. temperature wise. So you're right, it would be cool water would be best. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for. And heat itself, there are definitely dangers to that for dogs. Um, Stay away from the 10 to 2 time of day when the sun is at the worst. Always the hot times. Always the hot times. You want to walk your dog ideally before or after that time period. Watch out for the asphalts hot on their paws. You know, we've all stepped on asphalt. <laughs> oh, it's down. the Whoa, worst. Around bad. the pool deck or something like that. Exactly. It's even worse for them, you mm -hmm. know. So let them walk on the grass, you know, stay out of the, the high heat uh, window of the day if you can. And I think that goes for, you know, joggers and everybody at home, too. If we wouldn't go out in that weather, we don't want to subject exactly. our pets to it. Bring water with you if you're going for a walk for you. You and your dog, for sure. A lot of people might think this time of year it's good to <laughs> shave your dog's coat. That's actually yeah, not what you not should be doing. Good. You're absolutely right. You have a dog with long hair and you think, I'm going to do him a favor and give him a good shave and cool him off. Uh -huh. They need that protection. Dogs can get sunburned like people. Uh, their coat also protects them from being overheated. If they have long hair, cut it a little, but leave a base coat. And so don't shave that away. They need it. Another thing that's really important, I was walking my dog through my neighborhood the other day, and he was traipsing on the lawn because I wanted him to avoid the asphalt. But then I was about to hit the next lawn, and there was one of those signs there. It's a yeah. caution, like, uh, watch out pets and kids. There's yeah. pesticides being applied. We need to watch out for that in a bevy of different ways. Absolutely. If you're thinking about buying some kind of a treatment for your lawn, check your labels. When mm -hmm. you're there in the store, look at the different options and and find out what is safe and is not safe for cats or dogs to be exposed to. And when you bring it home, store it safely. Don't just leave it on the floor of the garage because your animals might not go over to it and be unleashed, but there might be stray animals that could get into it. Yep, so you never know. Be careful. You also want to make sure, because we love having uh, our fair share of barbecues and campfires yes. this time of year, we got to watch it with our pets. You do, especially if you play fetch with your dog and you throw sticks. Think about this. When you go to a barbecue or a big, you know, <laughs> it's bonfire. It's a whole pile of sticks. It's a pile of sticks that are in the fire. I mean, but that's terrifying. That's very bad because a dog could make the mistake of connecting the stick with playtime and mm -hmm. go to get it. Or if people are cooking food on sticks and then take the food off and toss the stick, it's still hot from the fire. Oh, that's Dangerous true. for the dog. Yeah, think about so. if you're doing s'mores with your pet, you got to uh -huh. be careful. you got to yeah. watch out. The, the big rule is to keep a dog like on a leash like Spence's on here mm -hmm. when you have a, cat, uh, a dog rather by a bonfire or something like that. Keep them leashed. Keep them safe. And I mean, if you're going to do something like this, you owe it to yourself to, to train your pet. To Absolutely. make it so that life's a little bit easier so that you can bring your pet and enjoy all the things that you want to do with your pet. But sometimes you can't if they're not treated properly. 
lastly, because yeah. we're outside and we're having such a good time, fleas and ticks also hang out outside and have they a good time. They sure so. do. And you know, it's you know, that's the safest thing you can do. You may say, "Oh, I'm not traveling with my dog anywhere," but you're going to go to friends' houses and other places. You're going to need to be sure he's up on his vaccines and preventives. So uh, there you have it. Thank you so much. And if people are interested in adopting any of the dogs uh, that they have it taken, you can stop in.